unit conversions, and the metric system going to be the topic of this lesson as we make our way through the rest of chapter one here in my brand new general physics playlist. Now, we're going to learn how to properly do conversions with the metric system. We're going to learn all these lovely metric prefixes, and you might also discover why maybe when you thought you were doing a conversion right, it ended up exactly backwards. Maybe you multiplied by a thousand instead of dividing by a thousand, or vice versa. You learn why exactly you did that and how to avoid it in the future. My name is Chad and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, if you're new to the channel, we've got comprehensive playlists for general chemistry, organic chemistry, general physics, and high school chemistry. And on chadsprep.com, you'll find premium master courses for the same that include study guides and a ton of practice. You'll also find comprehensive prep courses for the DAT, the MCAT, and the OAT. So unit conversions all starts with these metric prefixes. Most of the conversions you're going to do are going to be within the metric system. It's all properly using these prefixes. And you got to know what they mean. So uh, going from all a maximum here with exa at 10 to the 18th all the way to the smallest down here with addo at 10 to the negative 18th. And you got to know everything in between. Now in red here, I've kind of showed what the one letter abbreviation is when we kind of abbreviate the units. So notice like kilometers and we put that k, lowercase k, in front of meters, the base unit. So if you wanted a petameter, you'd put a capital P in front of the M instead. Now, obviously, probably not talking about pet petameters anytime soon or anything like this. So, but that's why we've got the, uh, uh, the first letter in red, so you know how to abbreviate it when you combine it with a base unit. Okay, so again, we've got exa, peta, tera, Giga, mega, kilo, centi, milli, micro, nano, pico, femto, addo. And again, you got to know what power of 10 each of these mean. Now, for some of the bigger ones, it's a little bit easier. Uh, uh, for numbers that we actually know, like 10 to the 15th is probably not a number in your head. So, and the truth is, exa and peta, probably not going to be used super often, but they're on most standard lists now, so probably worth your time. Same thing down here with femto and addo, and maybe even pico. Probably not going to see them super often, if ever, but again, they're on most standard lists, so worth your time to memorize. So, but if we look at like tera, this is the prefix that means one trillion. So, a tera meter is one trillion meters. Giga means a billion. A giga meter would be one billion meters. Gigabytes would be one billion bytes. So Linda, computer terminology. So mega means a million, kilo means a thousand. So centa, this one's a little bit funky. It means one one hundredth. So, and that's a little bit tricky because when you think of a centipede, you think, oh, centipedes have a hundred legs. But it's kind of backwards, actually. It doesn't mean a hundred. It means one one hundredth. Uh, one one hundredth, just like a cent is one one hundredth of a dollar. So the centipede guys, uh, the biologist that, that named that organism got it a little bit backwards. So, but centa means one one hundredth. Now, that's going to be a little unfortunate as we'll see here. So let's take a look at a couple different ways this might work. So if we take a look at one kilo, like if we looked at one kilometer, well, kilo means 10 to the third, so that would equal 10 to the third meters. And that would be definitely one way to look at it. Same thing with the centimeters here. So if we did one centimeter, that would equal 10 to the negative two meters. And so the way this works is as long as you've got one of whatever has the prefix, kilo, meter, centimeter, these have the prefix, it's going to equal 10 to some power of whatever that prefix means of the base unit. And so in a proper conversion, this is your conversion. You've got some equality that you're going to use. And the truth is, it doesn't matter if you do one kilometer over 10 to the third meters or 10 to the third meters over one kilometer. Either one of those can be used as a conversion depending on which way you're going. If you're converting two kilometers, then you want kilometers on top and it'd be this top one you want. If you're converting two meters, so then you'd be having meters on top and it'd be this version that you want. But both are acceptable conversion factors depending on which way you're converting. Now, if you're converting to SI units, then probably you're going this way, 10 to the third meters over one kilometer. The key in a proper unit conversion factor is that the numerator and the denominator are equal, just expressed in different units. And one kilometer does equal 10 to the third meters. 10 to the third meters does equal one kilometer. So that's kind of the deal. So same thing here with centimeters. One centimeter equals one one hundredth of a meter. And again, which one's the numerator, which one's the denominator, depends on which way you're converting. Now here's the problem, is there is one other way you can look at this. You could say that one meter whoop, equals 100 centimeters. 
And that is true. And more commonly, this is actually how I envision it in my head. I don't usually think one centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. I think one meter is equal to a hundred centimeters. And you could use this as a conversion factor as well. In fact, it's the one I probably use in my head if I'm, a, if I'm being honest. The problem is, is it doesn't actually use what centa means. Centa doesn't mean a hundred. It means one one hundredth. And so the truth is, I never perform calculations with this kind of reasoning. We run into the same thing with like milla, and, and uh, there's a thousand milliliters in a liter, that's true, but I'd rather think that one milliliter is equal to one one thousandth, 10 to the negative three liters, to be consistent with what the prefixes actually mean. And so here's the deal. So if you, again, with the unit that has the prefix, always put the number one there, and then put the appropriate power of 10 next to the base unit you're converting to. This assumes you're always converting to the base unit. Well, you can always convert through the base unit. Now, the truth is, what if you wanted to go from like, say, centimeters to kilometers? You could go directly there, but at this stage, I'd recommend going through the base unit. Convert first centimeters to meters, and then meters to the kilometers. That way, every conversion, every step of the conversion you're doing, always at least involves the base unit. Cool, and that's what these prefixes are there for. And so again, I will never do this. I will never put some power of 10 in, with the prefixed unit and a one with the base unit to avoid confusion. Most standard textbooks will avoid it as well. So cool, so this is the system of conversion we're gonna use. We're not using this one, we're using this one. And again, who's the numerator, who's the denominator? Just depends on which way you're converting. So let's do some conversions here. All right, so on the study guide here, first question is converting 438 kilograms, I'm sorry, 438 grams to the SI unit. Well, you have to remember the SI unit for mass is the kilogram, not the gram, which we uh, obviously so commonly use in chemistry. But again, the SI unit is the kilogram. And so in this case, to go from grams to kilograms, we've got to put grams on bottom, kilograms on top, that way the units cancel. And again, whichever unit has the prefix gets the number one. Well, kilo is the prefix here. Gram is the prefixless unit, not the base unit in this case, not the SI base unit, but the prefixless unit. And it's gonna get the power of 10. And it gets the power of 10 of whatever the prefix means. And in this case, again, kilo means 10 to the third or 1,000. And one kilogram does indeed equal 1,000 grams. And we can see that this will cancel here. And when we take 438 and divide by 1,000, we're gonna get 0 0.438 kilograms. Now, one thing to note here. So if you were looking and keeping track of your significant figures, you might be like, well, wait a minute, Chad. One only has one significant figure. Well, you're correct, sorta, but it doesn't matter. So here's the deal. 438, it does have three sig figs. They're all not zeros, so three sig figs. So far, so good. Your conversion factors. So in the metric system, your conversion factors are all exact. There's no uncertainty at all. So if you look, one kilogram isn't like kind of close to a thousand grams. It's exactly a thousand grams. It's, it's an infinite exactness. There's no uncertainty at measurement. So it's not really one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. It's 1. for infinity kilograms is equal to 1,000.000 grams, again, out to infinity. There's an infinite number of sig figs. So, and even for the sig figs, when you're doing like metric and, and, and uh, maybe American units or British units or something like that, and maybe you're, they're not exact, you're still probably supposed to treat them as exact, at least for this class. Now, if you were doing this, you know, for government work and, and some engineering project or something, that might not actually be the case. You probably would want to carry out your sig figs on the conversion factors more than we're going to in, in most cases. So, however, for the purpose of this course, you're probably going to treat every conversion factor as having an infinite number of sig figs. Therefore, as long as you're doing multiplication and division, how many sig figs you include in your answer is gonna be purely dependent upon the number you started with in the conversion, not on the conversion factors themselves. And that's why we're doing three sig figs on the final answer here. So the next question is gonna be converting 728 centimeters squared to meters squared. So this is units of area now. And area and volume are, are a place where mistakes are commonly made here. So we wanna convert from centimeters to meters, right? Well, not right. We wanna convert from centimeters squared to meters squared. Well, our prefixes are only gonna get you 
the, the singular unit, not the squared or the cubed if you're doing volume or something like that. And so if we look at what this conversion would be, well, again, whichever one has the prefix gets the number one and the prefixless unit gets the power of 10. Well, what does centa mean? Well, centa again means one one hundredth, 10 to the negative two. And so there's our conversion, except it's not gonna quite work here because centimeters doesn't cancel out centimeters squared. And so what you've gotta do from here is actually square the entire conversion factor. So that squares the numbers and it squares the units. And so if you look at what this ultimately turns into, well, 10 to the negative two squared is actually 10 to the negative four. And now that's in meters squared. And then one squared is still one. And that's in centimeters squared. And so you've got to square the entire conversion factor if you're dealing with the unit squared. If we were dealing with volume and the unit cubed, you'd have to cube the entire con conversion factor. And again, that cubes the numbers as well as the units. And so this is ultimately what we're really con uh, uh, multiplying by and the centimeter squared will cancel and we'll be left with an answer in meters squared. And once again, sig figs, we're not getting our sig figs from the conversion factor. Again, it's back to the original number and it's got three sig figs. Our final answer here should also have three sig figs. And so in this case, in multiplying by 10 to the minus four effectively, that's gonna move the decimal place back smaller four places. So one, two, three, and we'll add a zero, make it four. And so that's gonna be 0 0.0728 meters squared. And again, that has three sig figs. That first zero is not significant. All right, so the next one's gonna seem a little bit harder. So, and the truth is it's longer, but it's not harder than anything we've done in principle so far. And so we're given 150 kilometers per hour, and we're told to convert it to the SI unit for velocity. So, and if you look back, SI unit for velocity, well, velocity again is length over time. SI unit for length was the meter. SI unit for time was the second. And so the SI unit for velocity is the meter per second. And why this is gonna be longer but not harder is it's gonna involve two conversions. So, but each of those conversions is no harder than anything we've done. And so we've gotta convert kilometers to meters and hours to seconds. And it doesn't matter which one you do first. So in this case, I personally like to set up all the units first and I can convert kilometers to meters. So, and that will get rid of our kilometers and get us meters. So, but then I need to get hours to seconds. And so a couple different ways you can look at this. So you can convert the hours to minutes and then the minutes to seconds. Or if you happen to know that there's 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute, and so 60 times 60, 3,600 seconds in an hour, you're gonna use that so routinely that you'll probably get used to that at some point along the way. But for now, we're gonna leave it right here. And so the conversion between meters and kilometers, again, which everyone has the prefix, and that's kilo, gets the one. And then the prefix list unit gets the power of 10, and kilo means 10 to the third, 1,000. So, and then between hour and minutes, one hour is the equivalent of 60 minutes, and one minute is the equivalent of 60 seconds. And we're definitely gonna pull out our calculator here. So, but notice our units are gonna cancel as well. So our hours go away here. That's why I had to make sure it was in the numerator here. And then minutes go away here, and we'll be left with meters per second for our units. All right, so we've got 150 times a thousand divided by 60 and divided by 60. Now here's the deal. You could actually write divided by 60 times 60 as long as you're willing to put all the terms that are in the denominator in parentheses. Where in my calculator, I just divided by 60 and divided by 60 again and didn't put them in parentheses. It'll work either way. All right, so we're gonna get 41 and some change here and I'm gonna write this out as initially 41.67 meters per second. Now let's go back and worry about sig figs. And there's a reason I put four characters. It's actually a, a, a non-repeating, I'm sorry, a repeating decimal all the way out with all sixes. The reason I put four there, so if I go back to the original number here, uh, actually there's not a reason I put four, I should have put three. So, but in this case, it's 150 and that's only got two sig figs. And again, all of our conversion factors are exact. There's no uncertainty there. There's an infinite number of sig figs. So if there's two significant figures in our original number, we should get two significant figures here. And technically, I probably should have just rounded this to 41.7. So eh, 41.67 works as well. But the key is, if I only need two sig figs, there's the first one, there's the second one, and do I keep it the same or round it up? And in this case, because the unit following it is a seven, I'm going to round it up. And so this is gonna be 42 meters per second. 
written in the appropriate number of sig figs. Okay, now in similar fashion here, sometimes, especially if you're taking this course in the United States, you're gonna see units you might be a little more familiar with in this country that they're not gonna be familiar with in a lot of other countries, like miles per hour. So, and you've got some extra conversions you're probably gonna be on the hook for, uh, at least being able to, to do. So some of the actual conversion factors when it comes to converting between our US imperial system and the metric system, those are probably for the most part gonna be given to you. Can't guarantee it though. I put a few extra various conversions on your study guide there, uh, just in case, three or four of them, just in case. But most of the time, if you need one of those conversion factors, it's probably going to be provided. If your professor makes a point of having you memorize some, by all means, ignore me and listen to your professor and memorize those ones you're instructed to memorize. All right, but we want to convert this one now to SI units as well, and that's 150 miles per hour. And so in this case, again, we're going to need to get uh, two conversions, problems twice as long. We have to get miles to meters and we have to get hours to seconds. Well, we know how to get hours to seconds, and like I said, it doesn't matter which order you do this. So I'm gonna do the hours and seconds first. That one we can do pretty readily here. So we'll get hours in the numerator. So in this case, I'm gonna do it all in one fell swoop since we know what we're doing now, because one hour is 60 times 60 or 3,600 seconds. Save myself a little bit of time. And if I stopped here, it would be miles per second. Well, again, we want meters per second. So. At the end of this problem, I provided you with one of the unit conversions you're likely to be provided on such a problem. Also one of the ones that you might be required to memorize is really gonna be up to your professor. So, but the one I gave you converts miles to kilometers. I didn't give you a way to get from miles to meters directly. Sometimes that might be given to you as well, but in this case, what is miles to kilometers? That's your way of getting into the metric system, and then we can use our metric prefixes to get the rest of the way there. So that'll get us some miles to kilometers, but then, cancel out the miles, we'll want to get from kilometers to meters. So the conversion that was given was that one mile is equal to 1.609 kilometers. And again, you might look at this and be like, that's four sig figs. And you're technically correct. So this is actually not exact. So this is, there is some uncertainty in this number. There are more decimal places you could carry this out too. So however, again, for the purpose of this course, you're most likely gonna be instructed to treat all conversion factors as being exact and having no uncertainty. Cool, so again, the sig figs for the result are gonna be completely dependent back on the original number of 150, which has two sig figs. All right, that's gonna get rid of our uh, miles again and get us to kilometers, but then we want those kilometers to meter. The prefix, kilo gets the one, the prefixless unit gets the power of 10, which in this case, kilo again means 10 to the third. That'll get rid of our kilometers, and now we'll be left with meters per second. And we'll let our calculator do the rest of the work for us here. And so here we're gonna have 150. And again, as long as all you're doing is multiplying and dividing, it actually doesn't matter what order you do it in. So I'm gonna divide by 3600, and then multiply by 1.609, and then multiply by 10 to the third or 1,000. All right. In this case, we want two sig figs, so I'm gonna write out the first three. It's 67.04, which would be 67.0 meters per second. So, and in this case, that seven is gonna be our second sig fig. So we just want two sig figs. And so in this case, that seven round up, or does it stay the same? Well, it obviously stays the same. And so the proper answer and the correct number of sig figs is 67 meters per second. Now, one thing to note if you're taking this in the US, by the way. So if you're taking this course in the US, this comes up so routinely that sometimes uh, being able to ballpark a number in your head and see if it makes sense, uh, it becomes useful to memorize certain things, and this is one of them. So notice 150 miles an hour. So if I told you I was going down the road at 150, doing 150 kilometers per hour, you might be like, oh, uh, I don't know how fast it is. So, and it would be worse if I told you how fast I was going in meters per second. Now here's the deal, because the meters per second is the SI unit, because you're very likely to see something in miles per hour somewhere along the way in some example problem, might be a good rule of thumb to think that when you go from miles per hour, to meters per second. The difference is a little more than two to one.
So if I cut 150 in half, that would be 75, and this is just a little bit lower. And so when you wanna know, well, I've got 150 miles an hour, that's well, gonna be a little less than 75 meters per second. Good rule of thumb, because sometimes it's just convenient to kind of ballpark some things to see if you can get an answer that makes sense, especially on a multiple choice question. Sometimes you can avoid all the math and get the right answer with such a thing in your head. Not the biggest deal now, and again, really planting seeds for the future. For now, you should really be working these things out. But in the future, this could prove very useful. All right, we've got one more conversion to do here, and this is 1.5 grams per cubic centimeter, or centimeter cubed, and we wanna convert this to the SI unit for density. Well, density is mass over volume, and the SI unit for mass is not the gram, it's the kilogram, and the SI unit for volume is not the centimeter cubed, it's the meter cubed, and that's the nature of the conversions we've gotta do. And again, it doesn't really matter which one we convert, but this will also involve two conversions. So I'm gonna start with the grams and the kilograms. It's gonna be a little bit easier to work with. Put the grams on bottom make them cancel, kilograms on top. The kilogram will get the one, since it has a prefix, and the gram's gonna get the power of 10, in this case, 10 to the third power for kilo. So far, so good. And then centimeters on top to cancel this, and meters on bottom. But notice that's not gonna be sufficient here because we don't actually have centimeters, we have centimeters cubed, and that means whatever this conversion factor ends up being, I'm gonna cube the whole thing. Centa has the prefix, so I'll put the one there. Meter gets the power of 10, and centa means 10 to the negative two, or one one hundredth. And once again, I will cube the whole conversion factor. So this becomes one cubed, which is still one. So one centimeter cubed, but 10 to the minus two cubed is 10 to the negative six meters cubed. So, and that's how that's gonna go. And whether or not you wanna put this, you know, solo in your, in your calculator and then cube it, or actually cube them individually, like I'm doing one over 10 to the negative six. So it's entirely up to you, whatever uh, uh, ends up being more reliable for you. So, but this will again give us one over 10 to the negative six centimeters cubed over meters cubed, and that would cancel our units out, leaving us with kilograms per meter cubed, the SI unit for density in this case. And we'll let our calculator once again do the plugging and chugging for us. So we're gonna get 1.5 divided by 10 to the third or 1,000. And then divided by 10 raised to the power of negative six, or on some of your calculators, you could also write that as one e to the negative six. And that's gonna get us 1,500 from there. And that's actually what my calculator spit out. There was no extra decimals or anything like that. I just spit out 1,500. Well, once again, my sig figs are gonna be determined from this original number, not by any of the conversion factors. It's got two sig figs. So I want an answer with two sig figs. Well, it has two sig figs because neither one of these zeros is significant. And that indeed is your correct answer in SI units of kilogram per meter cubed. If you liked this lesson and found it helpful, then do me a favor and like this lesson and help me reach as broad an audience as possible. Happy studying.